everybody welcome back to another modern gameplay video today we are playing a spike feeder company deck that user a sakura guy took to a 5-0 finish in an mtgo modern league now i should mention that i saw four people the past two weeks 5-0 leagues with this list not the exact list but they all had their own little variations give or take and sakura guys just happens to be the variation that i like the best um, however, it wasn't the earliest. I don't know who exactly created this list, um, but the earliest one I could find was by Jung Hands. I don't know if Jung Hands made it, but if you know, let me know in the comments down below. So what originally attracted me to this list when I originally saw it like a few weeks ago, before I started catching on, is when I was scrolling through lists and then I saw this one had Conclave Mentor in it. And my first thought was, what the heck is this? And then I like scrolled over it and it was like, whoa, I totally forgot about this guy. It was the new winding constrictor from like M20 or something or M21. And I totally forgot it existed. And I was like, this has got to be fun. It's got hardened scales and conclave mentor. Now it makes me want to brew a deck with winding constrictor in there as well. Just have like all the winding constrictor effects. And uh, it's a company deck and I was like, oh, this thing can get pretty fat. But then I saw it's the Spike Feeder Heliod combo. And the Spike Feeder Heliod combo is one of the most easily assemblable combos because you can just collect it company into it. And then Spike Feeder, you know, you can remove a counter from it and gain two life. Heliod's then going to trigger whenever you gain life, you put a counter or something. You put the counter back onto the Spike Feeder and you just gain infinite life. Easily, you can find that off of a collected company um so there's that and then you also got the ballista that you can find with ranger captain of eos and along with the hardened scales and conclave mentor you don't even need a combo to win like the deck can just win naturally because of its natural fatness and then with all those effects you can also win with like gaviny township it just seems like a really solid mid-range deck and one of the things i'm most happy about seeing in this list is aria champion you might have heard me mention in the last video or like a couple of videos ago that I think Arya Champion is one of the best modern cards right now because of all of the Jund, the Blitz, the Burn, and the Shadow. And Arya Champion absolutely destroys those matchups. And so having those in your main deck right now is probably a great idea. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for this one. Let's check it out. And shoutouts to our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. If you want to play this deck in paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com link and anything you purchase through there really helps out the channel. It is the number one place on the internet to buy Magic the Gathering singles. And if you want to play this deck on MTGO, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off. And you can rent today's deck and play along with us. It is the most trusted and reliable MTGO card rental service, the best way to play all the Magic online you want yeah. and shout out to our supporters over on patreon their names have been scrolling down below this whole time it is because of you guys this channel is possible so thank you very much for your support if you would like to become a patron as well link is down below and with that let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay hope you enjoy all right we are live here on twitch got our deck freshly rented out courtesy of mana traders this is green white counters company we went over a majority of the, a majority of it in the intro how it's a spike feeder heliod combo and we got ranger captain of eos to find the ballista it's a coco deck um conclave mentor and hardened scales are there for some backup synergies like you can just win naturally with like heliod or ballista or scavenging ooze can get counters as well when it eats creatures and just natural fatness with galvany township and whatnot utopia sprawl is there for guaranteed ramp um it's weird that like seeing a, a list of this that's like doesn't have Arbor Elf. They're out of the four lists I mentioned in the intro, only one of them had Arbor Elf, even though they run Utopia Sprawl, which is kind of weird, but it's what I call safe ramp. And you might have heard me talk about this two years ago on the channel if you've been around long enough. But Utopia Sprawl is like guaranteed, like, I'm going to, we're going to get our turn two, three drop, and you're not going to stop us because you can't push or bolt a Utopia Sprawl. So it's like the safe ramp. And then Noble Hierarch for additional ramp. Uh, Knight of Autumn just is a singleton for tech. You can get counters on it as well. And um, that's about it for the main deck side where we got Burnt and Forged Tender for anti-red like red sweepers and anti-burn and blitz. 
A uh, path is removal, veil of summer for anti thoughtsies and counter spells, choke for anti control, get out tea for anti tron, uh, voice resurgence as a good way to deal with Liliana's and Jund. And then an additional Night of Autumn for life gain and naturalized effects can be versatile. And then damping sphere for anti tron and combo. And with that, we are ready to go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here again. It's a Shadow Void. We're going to be on the draw here with some. Um, green white counters company. I think that's gonna be a keep because I have the noble. But if the noble dies, then this hand is very bad. Um, but you know what? Even if I do have the noble, this hand's very color intensive because I won't be able to harden skills conclave mentor on the second turn like I would want to. I'd I'd be able to go scoos plus harden skills, which is not bad. So I guess I'll keep it. But if I get thought seized, I feel like I just want to concede and not reveal any information. Oh, I forgot. Now that we're in between rounds, I could have accepted a match from Archon Blue. Ooh, I drew a land. That's good. Secluded land, so we're gonna against fairies. All right, butter blossom. Wait, what did they reveal? Oh, they revealed butter blossom. All right, I see you. And now, since I drew the forest, I have the colors now to go conclave mentor. So let's do it. Let's get a basic plains mentor. Oh, this, this Gavney Township is going to be so good with Hardened Scales, Double Mentor. Like, uh, Gavney Township is basically going to basically reads, put four 1-1 one, one counters on each creature you control. It's going to be like Decree of Savagery. We're going to turn Gavney into a repeatable Decree of Savagery for less mana. <laughs> Which is nuts. Um, would be fun to add B to this deck for Winding Constrictor. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Having a deck with Hardened Scales, Conclave Mentor, and Winding Constrictor has got to be hilarious. We're going to commit everything. We're just going to make this Gavany Township an absolute surprise. Like, I feel like I'm not even going to swing in fear of Vendillion Click catching me. Like, I don't want to lose this at all. You know what? That's kind of greedy. I feel like I actually should swing. Because, like, if they want to trade Snap plus Fairy Rogue for Conclave Mentor, I mean, that's a bad trade for us. But, like, Gavany's still going to be game winning without one, with one less Conclave Mentor. It's still going to be put three one win counters in each creature you control, which is still great. So, maybe I do just not be greedy and swing. And yes, I don't know why I like to play cards on first main phase, but it's usually to save time in F6. Oh, they put in a C dasher. Okay, that's going to be annoying. Oh, you're down with alligators? Nice. Is there such thing as an alligator turtle hybrid? That's what I was thinking. Like, you could be a turtle, but there's no, like, turtle furs at all. Oh, this is going to be the beefiest activation. Activate Gavity. Decree of Savagery. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at it. Just look. 18. Swing for 18. It's so beautiful. 
Dude, I want to make an Abzan Winding Constrictor Conclave Mentor Hardened Skills deck with like, it has like two or three copies of Gavany. Oh man, that is just incredible. It's got to have so much mana dorks to be able to activate Gavany consistently. Flash and a C Dasher. Why didn't the trigger, the Fairy Rogue trigger? It didn't activate. Oh, they put on a... Oh, it's one of deals damage draw a card. Okay. I don't think they're going to beat that. They're at one life. Like, they're going to die to their Bitter Blossom trigger. <laughs> Give me a Ballista for the disrespect. Nope. All right. Well, I know what I'm about to do. Uh, do I shock here? In fear of cryptic command? In fear of cryptic command, I'm not shocking. All right, no cryptic command. Crunch. And then they're even going to die on their upkeep. They, they would have to, like, cryptic command, tap, and then bounce their own bitter blossom. That's the only way I could see them staying alive. But they already let us go to attack. So, I'm taking them down, going on to game number two. So I'm sideboard. I definitely want um, Veil of Summer because it's anti-blue-black, and guess what they are? They are blue-black. Um, Choke is probably not that great here. Uh, Voice Resurgence is probably pretty decent. And then Path is pretty decent because they all mutate stuff. And then Night of Autumn is good to destroy Bitter Blossom. And let's cut one ranger. Let's cut the scoozes. Aria champion's fine, but I don't think they care about it. Uh, let's cut one conclave mentor. One. Uh, one hardened scales, maybe. We're gonna like that. It would be fun to add B to this. Oh wait, I already read that. Let me, okay, I have to Google search the difference. Which one's, okay, what's, uh, do alligators live in fresh water or salt water? Fresh water, okay, alligator, you're an alligator. Real shroom. You're not a shroom anymore, you're the real alligator. The real gator. Or the gator shroom. Okay, we're on the draw now. And this is probably a mulligan. It's very sluggish. Like, I could go Mentor into, like, you know, it's it's not bad. If it hits its lands, it's not bad. If it whiffs, I go Mentor into Ballista as a 2-2, which is still not terrible, but I feel like this hand can be walked all over pretty easily. And if they somehow Thoughtseize or counter my Coco, then I'm just screwed here. Um, I don't know. I think that's going to be, um, okay, we're going to do a card. This is honestly a card flip. So what card do we got here today? Uh, Shanna Sisei's Legacy. Going to be if it's heads we're keeping, if it's tails we're mulling. Nope, it didn't flip. It didn't flip. Heads we're keeping. A gator named Shroom. Why is there two S's in Shroom? Is it like Shroom? Ooh, that's a combo. 
That immediately gives us two combos in this hand. Uh, yeah, that is. Ooh, bitter boss. Now I need to draw a knight to blow that up. Ooh, I got my land. Play mentor. Or you know what? I probably should have played ballista because. Oh no, no, this makes sense. I was gonna say play Ballista because next turn play Helia, the next turn I just give the Ballista lifelink swing with it. No, because they're gonna have uh fairies to block with, never mind. <sighs> Ooh, Veil of Summer. Okay. Um in in that case, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go spike feeder here because I want to have Veil of Summer back up when I play Heliod to make sure it resolves. Cause they could like activate Mutavault and then spell stutter spray to Heliod. And I ain't letting that happen, no way. Um I'll swing. I feel like I'll happily trade a Conclave Mentor for a Mutavault. They are taking it. It's really supposed to be S Shroom, short for Shroomy Shroom. Your first band. Oh, nice. You had a band. I think I just typed it wrong or something. So you just had to stick with it. Oh, Shroomy Shroom. Was that like an 80s band? It sounds like an 80s band. Are you a 70s baby? Made a band when you were like 16. What genre was it? I tried to like start bands when I was younger, like death metal band, black metal band. I, I tried to do a, a, a metalcore band. Actually, it was two black metal bands and one metalcore band. Ooh, Cryptic Command to bounce that to my hand. And on the main phase, too, so I don't have to worry about counter spells. I can just play my Heliod now. Two for your life for me. Oh, now. And now I can go. Oh, this is great. This is great. Because now I go, I play the spike feeder back out. And the next turn I can play Heliod with Veil of Summer back up. Oh, I should not have fetched there. And the next turn I play Heliod with Veil Summer back up and I'm pretty sure I win. Like it's gonna be a little close. And we're actually like really hurting our life total too. So they might die to their bitter blossom. Definitely psychedelic people said we sounded like Roxy music or The Cure. More 90s. Another butter blossom. Oh, they're draining out fast. Getting in for two, we'll take it. C Dasher, sure. Is that the draw card one? Yeah. Sure.
And now time for infinite life and infinite damage. My favorite part. The Avon and Noel. Not even a Noel would do it. I think that'll do it, dude. And remove counter. Gain life. Put it back on there. Eleven and twelve. And now let's swing. And if they have any interaction, we veil a summer. And GG. Taking down Demir Fairies with Green White Counters Company. GG. Got a game here against Bitter Blossom. And we won the die roll. Gonna be on the play with some Green White Counters Company. And that looks good because we can just dubs dubs harden scales and then just like try to win with just the ballista and in the meanwhile i'll probably draw something else to play you have a thick proto oh yeah you show me it on twitter thick boy hold on we got the the perfect sound oh wait no i can't play that sound effect i'll get demonetized um all right let's go Utopia Sprawl on green. Give them the impression that we're on Enchantress. Maybe after this match? Alright, well, you never know. It could be the last match. Could do it while the match is going. Up to you. But as you wish. Polluted Delta. Is this Grixis Shadow? We fought so many Grixis Shadow people today. I'm just done with it. Like, I just cannot fight another Grixis Shadow player. Okay, it looks like Wilderness Wreck. Could also be a um, Splendid Reclamation. Like we played in another video. All right, we are getting flooded. All right, time for Ballista. For X is five. Is it Remand? If this is Remand, then this is probably Wilderness Reclamation. Grow Spiral? Yeah. So it is Uro. It probably is Wilderness Reclamation, probably. Man, I, this stream's been online for five hours now, and the more and more the stream, like, it, the more and more it gets later into an MTG stream, the less and less I want to fight against matchups that I know is going to take, like, an hour long. And this is one of those matchups, if it is Wilderness Rec. These matchups take forever because they win slowly. They they kill you slowly. They just what they do is they counter everything you play, like literally every spell. Like they do not let a single spell resolve. That's that's the goal of a wilderness reclamation deck. We're going to find out right now, though. Let's see. Shock. No. Okay. Maybe it isn't what we think it is. Uro? It's got to be Uro. Yeah. All right. So we got that part right. It still can be what we think it is.
They didn't hit a land drop off of that. And I still just draw nothing. Okay, but at least we can leave up the threat of Coco. But I don't think they know exactly what we're on. Uh, what is the questionnaire about? The questionnaire is, is uh, it's, it's uh, fabricating a persona. It's like, it's a personality quiz to figure out what species you are. Like, if they slam Wilderness Wreck and I just top deck a land. Alright, so Uro means we're dead in three swings. Um, if I don't hit Coco's for days, we're just done. Um, they have Castle Vantress. Oh yeah, Castle Vantress is a really good sign that that is Wilderness Wreck right there. And I just drew in my land. I I'm scooping it up. Like, I just keep hitting lands. I'm, I'm getting ultra flooded. Um... All right, so were we going to get another land? Nope. All right. So Wilderness Wreck, we want another Night of Autumn. We want Voice Resurgence because of all the counter spells. We want Gadok Teague for anti-Wilderness Wreck. We want Choke for sure, and we want Villa Summer. And uh, Path to Exile hits Uro. So sure. C Coco... One Ranger Captain of Vios. One Noble, a Scales, a Mentor. The Aria Champions don't do much. The Scoozes don't do a lot. I guess we keep uh, one of these in. They're not going to really sweep us, so probably I leave in the Noble instead of a one of those. Ranger Captain of Vios is not bad to leave in, actually. So let's just cut the noble, or let's cut one of the one of our Utopia sprawls. Ramp's not going to matter in the late game. This, this game's going to be grindy. So maybe I do bring back in the Conclave Mentor over a Utopia sprawl. Too late. Like to play first? Yes. Um, yeah, it's got a choke. I'm slam dunking a choke. Just tapping out here so I can F6. You would be a scaly. Oh, yeah, Nate Bowser. What if you're Bowser? But you can't be. You can't be someone else. Um, what if you're... What if you're a Koopa? What if you're a turtle? Got all three drops, can't play anything. Just, I hope they tap out for a search for his Kanta here. Cause those decks love to play like one or two. Usually two or three, because like it's a big part of like wilderness wrecking. You get to like untap his Kanta a bunch. Oh, nothing. Okay, so they, I don't have to worry about a counter spell because they could just be having grow spiral. Um, I'm gonna slam it, I think. Oh wait, I could go Ranger Captain of Vios, and then I can sack it to like make sure they do not counter the choke, because the choke is like so worth it. I feel like choke could resolve now if I played it, but I feel like they might. I feel like they might like have. Assassin's Trophy. I'm gonna go in Ranger, and then I'm gonna sack it next turn and make sure the choke resolves. Alright, here comes Grow Spiral. Hey Midway, how's it going? Is that the dude from Dumb and Dumber? BC Warrior? What is that emote? I've never seen it. They did do what I think they're gonna do. All right, I have the combos now that I wanted. 
Oh, wait, Choke's not good in this matchup. I just forgot because Wilderness Reclamation, uh, Wilderness Reclamation just untaps other lands anyways. So it doesn't do anything. It's an old emote. Oh. Come on, tap out for something. Tap out for Uro. Play a tap land. Just get all of the tapped islands for me, please. This would be incredible. I love when I play really good chokes. Like, chokes at the perfect moment where, like, three or four things don't untap. That's my favorite. Oh, they're tapping down. Come on, put in another island tapped. I dare you, come on. Give me another island to tap down. Come on, give me one more. Nothing, dang it. All right, I'm, I'm happy with this though. Like it's at the point where, since they only have one mana, I'm not really fearing much. And I feel like I can just play choke without having to sack my ranger. Um, so yeah, let's do that. I don't think they're gonna counter it with one mana. They could have spell pierce, but I, I doubt. If they fetch in response, I might. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess around with spell pierce. I'm I'm doing this now. I'm not gonna mess around with that. All right, they're gonna get a non-island and then they're gonna abrupt decay or maelstrom pull or they're gonna assassin's trophy this choke. I guarantee it. As a magic player, I can tell you that is going to happen. Um, but I had to, I had to sack in and in, in fear of spell pierce because there, there is a chance they could have brought in spell pierce for Coco's. And uh, it's going to be a grindy match, so I didn't want to. Or here comes Maelstrom Pulse, maybe. Um, all right, let's go with, um, let's go with Ballista. Or you know what? Maybe I go Spike Feeder. No, let's just go Ballista because I'm lazy and it, it'll end the game quicker. Um, the fact, uh, or the thing is though, that if I go Heliod and give that thing lifelink, they'll probably just push the Ballista. Ceremonies rejection, sure. Okay, they didn't Assassin's Trophy the choke. That's good. Choke is amazing. This is like one of my favorite cards. All right, well, I'm going to go for the... I'm going to go for the Spike Feeder Heliod combo. All right, let's start trying to go for it. See if they want to kill this in response. All right, nope, they're just allowing me to do the thing. All right, am I really supposed to sit here for an hour and gain up to 100 life? Or, or see if they concede, maybe? Or what? Because, like, they probably have a way to beat me without damaging me. Like, maybe they stroke a genius me because the, um, that's sometimes what the Wilderness Rec decks do. And they don't have it. They're scooping it up. They're going to sideboard. And we're running it right back. Uh, let me bring this Conclave Mentor back in over a Utopia Sprawl. Because mana is going to be natural this game. It's like not such a big deal. We also took out our four drops. Um, and I think that Gavany Township could be a legit way to win.
You just got done playing Monoway Heliod Devotion in Modern. Won all three matches I played. Nice. Are you were you playing the list that we played on the on the channel? The uh that one we'd played? Ch like choking out blue players is the one of the funnest things to do. You think they were depending on Assassin's Trophy to take out the choke, but they didn't get the land drop or the right color before Heliod combo went off? No, they, they did have the mana. They did have the mana for like the whole time, but they just didn't have the Assassin's Trophy. I have choke again. Slam keeping it. Slam keeping choke. All right, shock, scales, and uh, I have one combo right there. There's one combo. And uh, hardened scales plus conclave mentor means that I can uh, get ballista pretty thick. Give me lands, give me lands. Nope. All right, Conclave Mentor. And I feel like um, there's a lot of good 1-1 one -one counter synergies in black. So I feel like splashing black, if you're going on a hardened scales thing, is worth it. Because, like, there's, there's some cool stuff like Drana. Drana's pretty sweet because you can just, like attack and put a whole just gavin your squad up i'm okay with that assassin's trophy because that's not going towards my choke and that also gives me the land drop i needed <laughs> conclave mentor is good it even gains you life when it dies sweet like a mini thrag tusk or like a mini filigree familiar Oro. Oh, they have two tapped islands. Give me another one. Give me one more. Blast zone. I ain't letting those lands untapped, though. Oh, this is the best part. Choke them out. Yeah, boy. What if you played Rakdos Cackler in a in a hardened scales deck? It's because you can unleash that thing when it enters, like and it could be like a one mana four four. They're gonna have to steadily tick up their blast zone. Okay, they are grow spiraling. They put in a a misty. Transformatron, thank you so much for the Prime subscription for eight months in a row. Welcome back to the Maven Nation or the Marination. How you been? Good to see you again. And thanks again for being a supporter for as long as I've been doing YouTube. A second choke because why not? Okay, we're gonna go Heliod just to make sure it resolves now. Probably wait. They have a land over there. Maybe it won't. Re oh wait, I should have probably waited for Veil of Summer. Oh, it resolved. Okay, cool. No mana leaks. No remands. Which is interesting. I feel like any deck that plays Grow Spiral should play Mana Leak or Man because once you have two mana left up, like your opponent could be fearing either thing. 
Like, but now they know that it's it's only a growth spiral, don't worry. Like, you gotta have that fear invoked in people's hearts. At least run a singleton mana leak. You'll get something with it sometime. So, like, mana leak is something that works anytime it's there. Unless you top deck it, like, turn 17, then it's bad. Aether Gust. Uh, put it on the bottom. I have a backup one, so don't have to worry about it too much. They get to untap all their lands. And if they have Crypt Command, oh, I want to be able to draw a land Veil of Summer to protect this choke. Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be so good. They also have to leave up mana in fear of Spike Feeder, because I, I do have that. And that is my combo, so... See if they want to tap out. Yeah, they have to pass. They need to interact with us. Land, please, please give me land. Ooh, Gadok Teague. That's not bad. I definitely like Gadok Teague here. Make sure that they're big old things they can't play. And if they try to deal with it, I'm just definitely going to Veil of Summer. I think I'll Veil of Summer. And it'd be awesome if Veil of Summer said that this couldn't be countered. Be even better. Snap for what? Aethergust? What are they? They're, they're Aethergusting Veil. Okay, interesting. Uh, let's put it back on top. I would like to draw Veil of Summer. That's great. Thank you for not Aethergusting Gadok Um... That was an interesting choice. Oh, my my LED light was facing me the whole time. Maybe that's why I was hecka bright. I don't know how long uh, that thing, that light was probably shining right at me for like four hours and I didn't realize it. So I'm probably going to look super bright in this video and probably the last video as well. And maybe even the first video. So that was unintentional. Okay, well, I get to draw Veil of Summer again. All right, so they just used a bunch of resources. I think I'll go Ballista now. And then with Ballista, I can go for the combo next turn. It'd be great. to command nope do they have a drown in the lock yay it worked and next turn we go for the combo Walking Dave Batista. Just pooping around the house. Nice. Sounds like fun. Not sure how they weren't expecting Veil of Summer. Yeah, like they put it back on top of our deck. Like they should have expected it. Yeah, it was very. They're playing very weird plays. They're they're doing very weird things. All right, Uro's fine. And guess what? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play my backup choke. <laughs> I could go for Infinite Life with Spike Feeder, but 
you know, sometimes, sometimes you just gotta do a thing. Because infinite life doesn't technically win. Ah, oh, would have been infinite damage too. All right, yeah, I probably should have just not joked around and just played Spike Feeder. Force of negation. All right, Gadok T, go. Spike choke just to send a message. No, because like Spike Feeder doesn't technically win. Like I could gain infinite gain infinite life with it, and it would have worked there. But yeah, they're just going for Uro now, which is fine. I'll I'll go for I'll go for um Spike Feeder now. I could go Ranger Captain of Eos and get a Ballista and play it. But let's just make sure that we're not dying to Uro anytime soon first, and then we'll just try to assemble that stuff after. We'll see if they have Drown in the Lock at the ready now. Push? Drown in the lock? Wait, what is happening? Oh, oh, they're tapping out. Thank you for letting me know that you have nothing. <laughs> That's great. And now we can also swing for infinite. Yeah, they're scooping it up now. They see that there is infinite damage on the board with Teague and Spike Feeder. And I even have another card in hand, which is going to get a Ballista, and they're screwed. DG taking down Wilderness Wreck that didn't have Wilderness Wreck. Okay, I, they for sure were Wilderness Wreck, but we just didn't see it. There, there's no way they weren't. They had Castle Vandress, they had Blast Zone, they had Growth Spiral, like... They're wearing just soul time mid range. They had to have been doing something with that. Like that that was clearly a build of Wilderness Wreck. We just didn't they just didn't draw it. I can guarantee it. Got a game here against a uh, Treyu for you to Nevada. And we won the die roll. Gonna be on the play here with some um green white counters company. That looks pretty good. Let's keep it. And we're going to start on one of my favorite things in Modern to do, which is Canopy in a Noble. And no, I've never played Five Color Humans. And I think we'll go right into... Depending on the matchup. Oh, this is Jund. Oh, man. I don't want to fight this, dude. I already went up against the Thoughtseize deck, and it's just like, I don't want, I, like, I want to play this deck. I don't want to just get everything ripped apart. Like, I just want to play it. I, I want to go up against a matchup where I can just play the deck. <laughs> yeah, see, they took the Arya champion because they wouldn't be able to deal with it. All right, let's get our Ballista, and Ballista, if we can get the uh, Hardened Scales down, be a really cool, like, backup win condition. But next turn we can go Hardened Scales and a Spike Feeder as a 3-3, three, three. pack for 4, pretty good. But yeah, average, your typical average Jund. Probably gonna kill my Noble here, I would imagine. But they're basically trading a Ren for a Noble, which is a fine, a fine trade. All right, let's go with Knight of Autumn with counters. You always lose to Grixis Shadow, rip. I confess I was lucky, I'm Brazilian, and at the time I started to stream three years ago, there wasn't any stream in Portuguese, so I reached partner in three months. Three months? 
<laughs> Yo, congrats, dude. I've been streaming for like three years. And uh, nowhere near, I'm nowhere near partner. I probably would have actually been near partner if I kept streaming Magic the Gathering every Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Saturday, or for, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. But I only stream on a Monday now. And Monday streams are the only streams that I do that get viewers. Because when I stream anything other than Magic, nobody watches it. <laughs> um, all right, so Goyf can't really, can't really kill. Um, we're gonna go, um, I could trade off, um, Knight of Autumn for Goyf, which I think I might do. But they could have a Bolt, which would kill me. All right, they are taking the trade. All right, we finished off the goif. Thank goodness they didn't have an instant. <laughs> that would have been terrifying and sucky. But that's a fine trade as well. A noble for a Ren, and then a knight for a Goyf. But then they're just going to blood braid and get two for one and just make up for all that lost value. Yeah, so. What blood braid does. And then Liliana, which is okay. Liliana's fine. Because if they want a minus, then I just kill it with Walking Ballista. So they're probably going to plus it, I would imagine. Dude, I already got a game. Like you you didn't accept earlier. Like it's it's tough. Alright, well, um Uh yeah, unfortunately, let's just kill Lily here. And then just sack Ranger Captain of Eos for its ability. Bad value for us, but how to do what you had to do. Still no land. All right, well, let's go. I could wait and play Spike Feeder as a 4-4, as a four four, and that's probably worth waiting because Spike Feeder is a 3-3, three three, just trading. I don't want to trade it. Like, I want to be able to stonewall that Blood Brain. And taking an extra, an extra three damage might be worth Roxa. Okay, well that hurts. Losing our Coco. We drew another Coco. All right, Spike Feeder, and if they want to try to kill it, at least I can gain eight life off of it. There's like a, um, you'd be surprised, the, the Brazilian magic uh, scene is actually really big. Um, a lot of people who like, um, watch my channel and watch my stream are Brazilian. Like, I, I was surprised, like, um, becoming a YouTuber that like if i had to take a guess like of like what countries would watch my um watch my channel and stuff i like i didn't think brazil would be so high up there and then there's like a good amount of like brazilian mtg streamers now like the the scene's pretty strong over there and Five mana is a Gargaroth? Or another Blood Braid? Okay, we're getting back Kroxa. I'm losing my Coco. But I can top deck a third one. Dang, Kroxa made me lose two Cocos. It's a shame. 
Paula Vitor and, and Carlos Ramal. Ah, oh, Scoos was just barely not in time. Now we have an 8-8 eight, eight Scoos. Like, every time I eat something with Scoos, it gets three counters. It's nuts. So please don't have a push. Anything but a push. Like, that would just be, like, the most kick-in-the-face, like, ha-ha, screw you card right now. Or an abrupt decay. Just have another, sure, just to have another Assassin's Trophy. All right, well, is what it is. Can't do anything about it. Maybe I should have gotten another planes there because I want to crack my horizon canopy and then if I drew a ranger captain of ES, I wouldn't be able to play it. All right, crack this. All right, GG, they got us. Yeah, Jund is, uh, we talked about this earlier, but we wanted to avoid going up against Grixis, Shadow, and Jund, and guess what we went up against? <laughs> yeah, this is just not a good matchup for a creature-based combo deck. Um, but let's bring in Paths, Veil of Summers, and uh, Voice Resurgences. And we are gonna cut one Ranger Captain of Eos, one Conclave Mentor, one Hardened Scales, one Noble, because they're just going to kill it, one Knight of Autumn. Wait, what happened? No, not a Ballista, I said Knight of Autumn. One Knight of Autumn. And I guess one Spike Feeder, because we already have Ballistas, two other ways to combo. Brazil is very strong on YouTube, but the thing is, I'm somewhat new, one of the oldest streamers, and I think one of the few that doesn't stream Marina. Uh, yeah, same here. I don't stream Marina either, mainly because I can't. I can't stream Marina. Um, it lags on when I try to stream it. And then even Fluffy, too. Dude, Fluffy, thank you so much for the raid with the party of 28. Welcome, y'all. Welcome, welcome. Let me give you a shout out as well. You were last playing Magic the Gathering. Welcome friends. I don't I probably don't even have to introduce myself because me and Fluffy completely share communities. So I I know Grace, I know Uncle, I know all of y'all. Uh would you like to play first? Yes. Um how'd the stream go? What were you doing? Started adding a bit. All right, let's uh, let's keep this hand. Started adding a bit uh, of arena, but you've been suckered into the pets. Oh no! All right, let's go. Utopia sprawl on green. I don't even know what's happening with arena. I haven't played it in like several months. And I'm not going to get into it ever again until they have a bot system in trading. Like, because somebody made a point. If you don't have a trading system on Arena, then it's not a trading card game. It's not a TCG. It's just a card game. It's basically Hearthstone. Um, is there even trading in Hearthstone? Um... But for those of you who don't know me, welcome. My name is Marin, aka Maven. And I stream Magic the Gathering and Super Mario World and Destiny 2 and Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time currently. So I guess I'm kind of a variety streamer. Let's go with... Do I need to go Horizon Canopy here? I can go Wooded Bastion, right? No, 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 no. Tap for white. And then tap for double white off here. Yeah, there we go. Harden scales, RF champion, go. My trouble with arena, full-time streamer that depends on subs to survive, so I eat or buy cards on arena. 
yeah i can't buy cards on arena it's like oh you need a new standard deck well you're gonna have to spend a thousand dollars on packs to get the wild cards that you need to get a new to get your 30 rares you need for your standard deck like because you need six packs to get one wild card to get one 15 cent bulk rare that's stupid and then like you have to get 30 rares for your standard deck right so that is 30 times that's 180 booster packs for 30 rares that you need it's kind of dumb not gonna lie it's pretty dumb it's too much effort can i just get heliod spike feeder oh yes i can and that's infinite life baby Yay, they scooping it. Mortal Kombat on occasion too. No, not anymore. Like I would love to, but it's just, there's no more pro leagues. There's no more point. I'm too far behind now since I lost Xbox Live. Now I have Xbox Live again, I'm playing Destiny 2. Um, all right, let's submit it right back, try it again. Actually, hold on. I wanted to bring back in the, the, the Ranger Cabs and Avios. I think it's too late. They already submitted. All right, whatever. Have a great stream, though. Thank you, Fluffy. Thank you again for that raid. I really appreciate it. All right, we are on the draw now, and this is keepable. It's got Veil Summer that's end up gonna end up getting Thoughts East right now. Oh, maybe not. All right, we are 100% leaving up Veil of Summer. 100%. Prismatic Vista, go. Come at me with that Thoughtseize. I dare you. Do it. Do it. Fetch that. Fetch that. Okay, no Goyf, no Bob, no Ren. Just, just, just Thoughtseize me. Get a basic swap. Nope. Talk it. No! No! All right, well, oh, that scooze is so tempting. What to do? Um, okay, Utopia Sprawl here. Name white, actually, because I need double white for a Ranger Captain of Eos. Pass. Still leaving up this dang veil of summer. It's the last thing I do. And you do that and end up with 300 uncommon wild cards and 30 mythics and zero rares. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? You gotta end up with your mythic wild cards too. Can't spend a rare on a mythic. And imagine you're playing a deck that needs like 16 mythics. You're screwed. You're gonna need to buy like 480 booster packs to get one standard deck. All right, we're going Scooz, because Scooz is good. And we are gonna protect it. It's our anti-Ren package. Nope. I played around everything just for this one moment, and I drew another Veil of Summer, too. I'm also getting mana screwed, so that's kind of a bummer. There it is. Taking another Veil of Summer. Probably a spike feeder, honestly. Were they taken? Yeah, they took the spike feeder. I knew it. Now they can get their fetch back. Okay, command, kill that, and make me discard. 
Of course, sorry. Ditch Noble, it's too late for Noble right now. They can also just minus Ren to kill it, so not worth. Give me the land for the Coco. Let me just hit Coco in Spike Feeder Healy out again. All right, I'm, I'm slamming. I'm going for it right now. Give me Spike Feeder Heliod. Oh, we got it. Oh, yes. Oh, come on. I want them to be salty. You better get salty. That just happened. The mass, the, the disrespect, the, the maximum disrespect. Yes, take that, Jund. Take that, Jund. All right, let's pass a turn. Let's F6. If they try to kill Spike Feeder, I'll just let it go. Hard to say you like FPSs and whatnot. Don't know if that's manly. I like cats more than dogs, though. All right. Um... The next question is, um, the next question is, oh, wait, that kind of answers my question, FPS shooter. So I was going to say fantasy versus, like, modern. Like, fantasy of being, like, World of Warcraft kind of style and, like, Skyrim and stuff. But FPS is more like Call of Duty, Destiny. So it, FPS is... So that's more modern. Um, and I'm forgetting my questions here. I guess the next question is, what is your favorite color? All right, we're going to go with Ranger Captain of Eos to find our Ballista. Good thing I found another Veil of Summer to protect. You totally play it. You play Dungeons and Dragons into the RPG fantasy stuff. All right, cool. Um, uh, okay, well, I, I, okay. Let's put it all together. You do love you you don't love traveling as much as as you did before. So you kind of have your territory, you kind of stay in your own vicinity. Um but you do like the idea of swimming under the ocean with all the sea creatures. Um you're more of a nighttime person, antisocial. You like fantasy. I'm kind of getting I'm kind of getting uh Okay. So, you know how people um how like what is the difference between an alligator and a crocodile because alligators are like freshwater and then crocodiles are like salt water right whichever the freshwater one is that's the kind of vibe alligator vibes You know, like, you know, like in Amonkhet, the alligators, like the Amets, the, the, the Anthro, the Anthro gators, how they have, like, they're holding the spears and they're like the zombie gators. Like, I see you being a, being an Anthro gator. Because you can swim with the sea creatures. However, you're kind of antisocial and stay in your own territory. Um, alligator sea dragon. Could be a sea dragon or an octo. All right, let's see. Um, one, two, three to anti do things. Uh, I could wait, but just, oh man, like I want to be able to go Ranger Captain of Eos and then crack it so that they can't interact and then proceed to go for Ballista. I have the time to wait. I feel like it's dangerous to wait. 
they have retrace on their spells so like if i go for ballista they're just going to retrace push on it but if i if i wait i feel like they're just going to they're just going to thought seize like they're they're just going to retrace inquisition like twice and just take my ballistas i feel like it's it's safer to just go for ballista because if they have a push now they're going to deal with my stuff so let's just go ranger captain of eos let's say yes let's go get a walking ballista let's cast a walking ballista Rexus 2. And now we're going to give them the opportunity to deal with that one. They're going to have to deal with that ballista and Inquisition my other ballista. And they're going to also have to kill my Ranger Captain Vios. But if my Ranger Captain of Vios lives to my next turn, I win. Because I sack it, make them unable to cast non creature spells, and then I win. Because I go for the combo. So come on, opponent, just stop. Do, being stop doing annoying Jun stuff. Hashtag annoying Jun stuff. There it is. All right. So they're doing hashtag annoying Jun stuff. We're tracing a land, killing my thing. But at least I get to keep the ballista so I can try to go for game with that one. And then if that one dies, I play the next one and go for game with that one. And I have just enough mana to do all the three things next turn. And what, they got another thing to do? They even have a K command. Good thing I drew a card off of the Veil of Summer so I have something to discard. Now watch them top deck a land and retrace the Kolagon's command and make me lose the Ballista in my hand. It's going to be so annoying. Watch. Oh, nope. Oh, don't hit an Inquisition Thoughtsies. Assassin's Trophy. That can't kill Heliod, so that's good. And now they now they lose. They have no way to retrace. Yeah, they lose. All right, cool. That was close, but thank goodness it is finally ending. <laughs> All right, one, two, three, four. Ballista, Exits 2. Give lifelink to it, and now we win. He was all there all along. Opponent made us play it out. All right, opponent, now you literally see it's over. There's no way you make us play it out now. It's literally over now. Like, before they had an actual chance, but yeah. And they, they're trying to exploit the fact that this is MTGO. Like, I had infinite life, but because it's MTGO, I couldn't technically gain infinite. So they're trying to exploit that fact and still kill me. But, you know, in Moto, you got to do what you got to do, right? Um, but still, if, if, I, if I, my opponent's bike feeder Heliotted on me, I would assume in my head, okay, that's infinite life. If this wasn't the MT, if this wasn't MTGO, that's technically infinite. I, there's no amount of time that would get me get them dead because it's infinite. And but on MTGO, I wouldn't be oh, like, you know, I'm gonna exploit that. And because you don't have all the time in the world, I'm still gonna try to kill you. Like that's dumb. Screw that. <laughs> all right, taken down Jund with uh, two separate combos. Uh, we drew all three Veil of Summers. Lucky us. <laughs> All right, we're definitely gonna have to speed that one up. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the VOD from last Monday. So we're only speeding up one single round today. There might have been a second round sped up, but there was actually one round 
that we won that didn't make it into the video because I forgot to click record before I played that game. So rookie mistake. <laughs> um, I've only been YouTubing for three years. I still make mistakes like that from time to time. Um, so anyways, we got one set of game today is against Grixis Shadow. And of course it's at the end so that you guys can see how it all fell apart, how it all came to be. Uh, just like in the last two videos, spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, we almost snagged the 5-0. But Grixis Shadow is a very bad matchup, and Jund is as well. We got lucky beating Jund. Um, but Grixis Shadow and Jund are probably our most horrible matchups because they have so much interaction and stubborn denials and thought seizes and bolts and pushes and terminate. They had terminate too. Like they had like so much removal and hand disruption that it just makes it like really kind of difficult to get anything going. That's why a deck like this really needs a play set of Veil of Summer and needs to hit it when it sideboards it in or else it's like kind of difficult. I mean, even back in the day, some decks like this would even run Leyline of Sanctity in the sideboard, but Veil of Summer nowadays is probably just better. But then when they're on the play, they get to Thought Seize you ahead of the curve so that they can just take your Veil of Summer and then proceed to push every creature you play. So um, we sided in Veil of Summer and Shaper Sanctuary, um, but unfortunately, I don't think we saw any of them they would help out a lot because whenever they try to kill our creatures, we'd be able to draw cards and whatnot. I had a Veil of Summer there and like I almost had the combo here, but I didn't have like the mana. I didn't have the colors for some reason. Like I, it was some, some kind of mana problem I remember was was a thing with this game. And like I had double Coco, I really wanted to get up, get up to it. But I think they ended up thought seizing one of them or something. And then I got the other one off or like I was just looking for my fourth land desperately. That's probably what was happening here. Just looking for my fourth land at Coco and it ends up getting countered with Drown of the Lock. And then we knew that they had a Snapcaster or another Drown of the Lock or a Stubborn Denial or something like that. So they like us stumbling on mana gave them the time to find their answers to our Cocos and that's gonna do it. So pretty bad matchup, you really gotta prepare for it. And with that, we're going on to the wrap up. Hope you enjoyed. So we ended up with four total wins, although one of them's not gonna be in the video because I forgot to click record. Um, maybe even two of them won't even be in the video because I, I don't know how long ago I forgot to click record, but I'm pretty sure it was just for that last game. Pretty sure just for that one, but the deck did pretty good, did what it was supposed to do. And as any green white um, creature based combo deck is nowadays, it usually will do solid um, no matter what combo you're going for. It could be like the Bant one, like the Kitten one we played the other day. It could be Devoted Druid Vizier. It could be something like this, like Coco into Spike Feeder Heliod. It's just like, there's a lot of potential creature based combos now. You can go like Naya with Kiki. And they all do pretty solid. Just like if you know how to pilot them, you can do pretty solid at like any time with them. They're like this list is really, or this deck in general is just really wacky. Like how it has Utopia Sprawl but no Arbor Elf and how it has like just the random like Ariok Champion Scoos. I felt like if I tried to build this deck, I would just go like hyper aggro and just happen to have Spike Feeder Heliod in the mix. I like the idea of like the ranger captain of eos grabbing ballista i would totally keep that there um there's like now looking at the rest of it there's really not a lot to potentially change except put birds over utopia sprawl and then a second gavany township so that that's a lot more consistent because that was sweet gavany is awesome when you have the the conclave mentor or the, the hardened scales it's sweet it's very, very strong backup win condition. So I would definitely make that change straight away. Just birds over Utopia, put a second Gavany. And Ariok is maybe sideboard because there was a lot of matches where it just did nothing. They, it did something a lot, but it, it actually, in matches where I wanted it, it got Thoughtseize. And I just like run up, went up against so much Thoughtseize today for this video. Um, just a lot of just disruption removal decks. And um, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. And we still ended up with a solid record regardless. Like, it was pretty sweet. And it, the Scooze is another one of those cards where it's like, it could be really, really solid main deck card, but it could easily be sideboard any day. And uh, what you could run instead is like, I don't know, maybe Hangerback Walker, at least a single tin. So you have something else to get with Ranger Captain of Eos in case you're trying to win with the grind rather than 
um, going for ballista. Like if you wanted to get a hanger back, the option would be there. Um, there's that. Maybe you put a singleton, um, like stone coil serpent in there, maybe so that you have that to fetch out with Ranger Captain of Eos as well. If you just want something Omega fat, um, for this, the situation, if you're trying to win by attacking rather than winning by value, um, yeah, just there, there's a lot of different ways you can build this. That kind of is shown by the fact that the four different people who 5 would with this list had different, like, slightly changes, slightly different changes on the list to their liking. Um, so, yeah, do whichever, whatever you feel is right, and it'll be pretty solid. Can't go wrong with a creature based combo mid range. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest DM play every other day. Let me know a deck you want to see in the comments down below. Uh, go check out the social media. Go check out the Twitter. Links down below. As well as link to Twitch if you want to catch one of these live streams. We stream our Magic the Gathering gameplay all day long on Mondays. And we stream variety through the rest of the week, Tuesday through Friday, if you want to come out and see some other games. If you want to try today's deck out for yourself, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off. And you can win today's deck and play along with us. It is the number, it is most trusted and reliable Magic Online card rental service, the best way to play all the MTGO you want. And if you want to try the deck out in paper, consider purchasing through our deck list to link down below. That's our TCG player link, and anything you purchase through there really helps out the channel. Uh, TCG Player is the number one place on the internet to buy Match the Gathering singles. And uh, shout outs to all of our supporters over on Patreon. It is because of you guys, this channel is possible, so thank you very much for your support. If you would like to become a patron as well, a link is down below. And with that, I'm going to get on out of here. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.